building forms. When you first log into iForm Builder, you're going to be on your data page. Go to Forms, Form Builder. Once inside the Form Builder, you're going to have a list of all forms on your account. To create a new form, select Create New Form. Once in the Form Builder, you're going to name your form. Add a form label. The table name will resemble the form label unless you want to change that. You're now able to select a, an icon for your form. If you want to add your own icon, simply add the URL to that image. Down below we have reference IDs. Reference IDs add advanced features and functionality to your forms. They are more advanced features and will be something that will be covered later in the form. Down below you're also able to add a page level JavaScript at any point, but for now, let's just click Save. When the form loads, you're going to be in the device view. On the left hand side of the screen is the device view. This is the actual order of each element on your form. On the right hand side, you're going to customize each element or input to your liking. For this demo, we're going to create a very simple lead capture form for a fictitious company called Pi R Squared. On this form, you have a first name, a last name, a company, and a phone number. To create our lead capture form, we need to add our first input. Select Add New Input. By default, my element is going to appear. On the right-hand side of the screen, we can customize this. Notice that label and data column name are separated. The data column name must be unique to the page that they are on and database friendly. Data column names cannot begin with a number, cannot contain spaces, and cannot contain any special characters. Inside the form builder, on the right hand side, we have the common section. Common sections where we're going to add our name, our data column name, and base it on the label. In the input section is where we're able to select one of our 38 different types of inputs. We have attachment widgets, date widgets, dividers, emails, uh, signatures, multi-select, 38 different types of options for you to help, or to help you build your form. Once you select the input type, you're also able to determine, do I want to make this a required field? Do I want to make it a read-only field? Do I want to encrypt this element? We will cover these other elements later in the demo. For the first name, I simply want to have first name appear on the device and I want the input type to be a standard text field. That's it for first name. We're going to know, go down and select add new input. We're going to highlight this input. We're going to go up into the label and we're going to change this to last name. We're going to drop down into the input properties. We're going to review which type of input type we want. We want it to be a text field. We highlight text field. We want to make that required and we're good to go. For the third element, we're going to add a new input, go into common. We're going to ask for this to be called company. This too is going to be a text field. Another text field, I also want that to be required. And finally, we want to have a phone number for this contact. So we're going to do add new input, go back up to common, and ask what is your phone number. Again, I'm going to go down into input properties. We have a phone number widget. I select phone number widget and I'm good to go. Once my form is completed, I'm going to select save and load.